When Jesus invites, accept. That's right. When Jesus makes an invitation to us, then that means he wants us to accept it and to enter in. Amen. So, hallelujah. So, uh, when Jesus invites, accept, right? Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30 says this. Come to me. There it is. There's the invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wow, that is so good. You know, Jesus, I, Jesus, uh, rest for our souls. Well, I, I love when he says that because Jesus provides us, you know, rest from all the stress. Lord knows that day by day, as we're as we're living our lives, as we you know, begin to encounter the the day to day uh, things that happen, uh, there's a lot of stress attached to it sometimes. Amen. And uh, Jesus says, "Come to me. You know, I'm the one that can help you. See, only in Him, uh, you know, can our burdens really be lifted. Right? Uh, when we're able to understand how to turn it over to Him, how to cast our cares upon the Lord, because He cares for us. So every day, sometimes we just need to be reminded. You know, some of us are being informed, other of us are being reminded that we don't have to carry that burden." See, uh, see, in Him we can find help and strength in our greatest times of need. So always know that God is there, and uh, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are there, you know, consistently and constantly, daily, all the time. So when you have those moments, man, sometimes I just I'll just turn it over right there. I just say, Father, just take this, take this burden and help me with it. And you know, when you do that and you live your life daily doing that, you're going to find out that you're going to be more peaceful. Amen. You won't be so burdened. Uh, you know, I believe that true peace can never be found through this material world. I mean, uh, it's, don't get me wrong. It's good to have the things that we need materially, right? We need money. I mean, I don't believe God wants us poor. I don't believe in the gospel of poverty, okay? I don't believe that's that's God. I believe that God wants us prosperous. The, the word prosperity is in the Bible. So I believe that he wants us prosperous and, and, and doing well, right, in every area of our lives, spiritually and, and emotionally, materially, right, physically and financially. I, I, I believe in all that. I believe that God wants to have the very best that we can have this is everything on this planet belongs to him and i mean i don't know about you but with my children right i want to make sure that i can bless them with what god has blessed me with as well and i want them to have good things as well so there's nothing wrong with that but just know that you, you'll never find your peace in that uh, you'll never find fulfillment in the things of this world see it's the peace that god gives us it's the rest that jesus says come in and get this rest that i have for you just come and sit down with me and just and, and, and begin to, to, to reason with God and begin to share with God. When you do that in, in your time of prayer and fellowship and, of course, in your time in the Word, then God speaks to you. And when He does, it's just such an amazing thing. I believe that um, because He is our peace. I want to encourage you guys. Listen, if you're going through certain things in your life and there's certain really hard situations that you're trying to either overcome or, or maybe praying for someone else as well, fasting and praying is gonna, is just one of the most powerful tools that Christ has given us. It's one of the most powerful weapons that we can ever have in our arsenal to come against the enemy uh, and his devices, and of course, also just to come against certain things that we want broken off of our lives. Look what Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6 says. Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? See, I love this scripture. This is such a powerful, powerful, powerful uh almost an outline of the things that fasting does starving starving the flesh is feeding the spirit that's right when you starve your flesh i believe that the spirit man inside of you has the strength to rise up it's it's also the act of denying yourself right the word of god says that if you want to be a disciple 
You have to deny yourself, uh, take up your cross and follow Christ. So, so denying ourselves mean even in, in, a, in a season where God can, can help you get through certain things, then I believe that, that fasting just really, really, really amplifies the power of God in our lives. See, I believe that adversity is a season of unusual attack. See, some of us are being attacked right now in different areas, and it's unusual. It's not the norm. Sometimes you'll feel it at every front of your life, you know, whether it be your, your personal life, your professional life, your family life. I mean, you'll seem, it seems like you're being attacked on all corners. And when that begins to happen, know that, that that's a demonic, a demonic uh, conspiracy to try to tear you down. So consider using unusual weapons during unusual seasons. Listen, fasting is designed to take the inner man and strengthen them. Uh, strengthen him, right? Strengthen our inner men uh, and women too, right? And, and I'm telling you, it does make an impact. Uh, I believe that fasting is a feared weapon in battle. The enemy knows that once you begin to fast, God is going to start moving. Listen, how many how many times in the Bible uh, that you've seen where where the enemy is attacking Israel, for instance, where Jehoshaphat is surrounded by the enemy? And what does he do? He calls everyone to fast and pray. That's right, the whole nation. I'm talking about even even the dogs and the cats and the sheep. Everybody fasted and prayed. And when they came to the house of God, they began to worship him. Amen. The prophet spoke. Uh, long story short, the battle was won. And, and, and Israel and, and Judah never had to pick up a weapon. Their weapon, and the most ultimate weapon, was fasting and praying. And they were able to defeat the enemy. Oh my goodness, that is so powerful. See, this is a weapon that sharpens your spiritual sensitivity to God. So use it absolutely to be empty of ourselves is to be filled with God. Mm. May I tell you, I want you to know that if there's things in your life that you want to really transform and change and you've tried and you've prayed, begin to fast and pray over those things fast and pray over those people that you believe in God to come to Christ, right? Begin to fast and pray for them. I know that God will do something amazing, amen, because God responds, God honors the sacrifice that we make when we do that as well, amen. So I just, I just, had, to, I just had to share that with you, and it, and it really uh, declutters your heart and your mind when you fast as well. So there's, there's just so many marvelous benefits, praise God. Well, I close every gathering with a, with a scripture, and this scripture is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 16. Now listen to this. This is very cool. Happy is the man. Of course, some of your translations may say, blessed is the man. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Now listen, the Bible is talking about wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Oh my goodness. Listen, that is such a powerful word. That's wisdom. That's what wisdom does for us. I tell you what, wisdom is greater than anything that we could have to help rule our lives. The wisdom of God. You know, Solomon was asked, Solomon, listen, you can have anything you want. That's what God said. Whatever you desire is yours. What do you want? Man, he said, I want wisdom to just be a good leader, to be a good king over your people. And God said, man, because you've asked for that, now you have everything else that you'll ever want. Man, listen, I tell you what, guys, every day, seek God's wisdom. I love the fact when it says that length of days, that means a long life is in your right hand. I love that. And of course, your left hand, riches and honor. Oof, I received that blessing. I hope you do as well. Amen. And um, so as you go on today, pray, I pray that God will put you in a place to minister to somebody today, lead them to Jesus, and then bring them to church so they will experience the fullness of God's love and God's life. Amen. And always remember, that's right, 
when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. God bless you.